Hi, welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm Professor John Art and I'm your instructor. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make this a beautiful sailor's chain. Now, the sailor's chain gets its name from the type of chain that was used for many years to secure the anchor to ships. It's a variation on this, a loop and loop chain. Now, both of these chains started with this, a closed loop. Now, if you're new to making jewelry, you'll want to check out our video entitled Making Jump Rings for Jewelry. And you might want to follow it up with the video on this project called The Ancient Art of Making Loop and Loop Chains. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make the linkage. And in a subsequent video, I'll show you how to make the closure. Let me show you the tools that I'm going to use for this project. First, I've got a beret file. I recommend either a two cut or four cut. I've got two dapping punches, two center punches, a clamp-on bench vise, a spool of 14 gauge round copper wire, diagonal cutters, forming pliers, round nose pliers, square nose pliers, chain nose pliers, a goldsmith's hammer, a bench block, and a coiling tool. And most important, eye protection. Be sure to wear your eye protection whenever you're working in your studio, especially when you're working with wire. All right, so let me show you how to get started. Like I said, the project begins with the closed jump ring. Make sure that you minimize the amount of solder that's on the jump ring. And the first step that you're gonna do is to secure one of the small dapping punches in your clamp-on bench vise. Then what you wanna do is Put the jump ring over the dapping punch. Take your secondary dapping punch, and before you take a, uh, the plunge and pull, you need to see where your solder joint is. I recommend that you want to try to keep your solder joint somewhere in the middle. That way, th there will be the least amount of pressure on it. Then what you want to do is just give this a pull to stretch the ring into an elongated oval shape. The next step that you're going to do is you're going to take a pair of pliers. Here I'm going to use a pair of forming pliers and I'm just going to pinch the loop in the middle and bend it to create this shape. The third step is to change out the dapping punches. You'll put one of your center punches into the clamp on vise. This is because you don't have three hands. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to take the form that you made out of the loop. You're going to put one of the curves onto one of the center punches. Then you're going to take the secondary center punch and hold it perpendicular to the first one to secure the piece. Then what you'll do is you can take your round nose pliers and you're going to bring the curves together on both center punches. Then what you want to do is you want to compress the material closer to the one that's holding the piece with a little bit of a smaller diameter. So I'm choosing to use this one for that purpose. So I'll just pull, pull the material down. Once you do that, give it a pinch. And you want to do this to both the top and the bottom. And if you need to go underneath, it's okay. Or you can always flip the material over and just do it from the top if that gives you easier access. Now what you're making are called the wickets of the links. Now that's just basically a fancy term for the framework of the piece. And it gives you a little bit more dramatic effect if you have one wicket that's larger than the other. So I like to keep the bottom wicket larger than the top. And you can see I have a smaller opening at the top. So you'll do this to all of your loops. Remember you're coming from this shape and pinching it. Then what you want to do is open it. And let me bring this one back. It's very simple. Just put your fingernails in, pull it apart. If you need to, you can grab a tool, you could grab your flat nose pliers, and then just open it like that. So I have a couple of them right here. 
Now, what you're going to do next, by the way, take the center punch out of the vise so you don't hurt yourself. So the next thing I want to do is I want to take my goldsmith's hammer and I want to forge the bottom wicket. So with the link open, I place the larger wicket over the edge of the bench block and then I just forge it. Just like that. Then repeat on the other side. Okay, so let me show you something now that will help you to better understand this. I basically have the smaller wicket at the top and here's the larger one after forging. Now, you may have an uneven edge and it may be very wide at the bottom. What you'll do with your file is to perfect this shape into more of a teardrop shape. But here's the important point. You want to eliminate some of the material at the bottom. You don't want it to be just cut off and flat, but you do want to remove some of this distance between the opening and the outer edge. Otherwise, when you form the chain, you won't have good movement or free movement between the large wicket on the top link and the smaller wicket on the bottom link. I think you can see that pretty well right here. Okay, so the way to do that is once we've got our link forged, we can push it back together so that the wickets are almost parallel. And we'll take another one that I've already completed and we'll put it closer together. The way that you join them is you're going to slide one through the other, just like that. And then push the other ends closed so that they hang one from the other. Now you can see this one is captured here, and if I push this together, it sticks just a little bit. So you can make the modification to it after they've been joined. And that's where the beret file comes in handy because the backside and the edges have no teeth you're not going to run the risk of damaging the, the uh, link below. So just run your file over the edge to perfect it. And if you've done a good job forging, this should take just seconds to do. And then you just want to flatten this edge just a tiny bit. Now, if your wickets aren't totally together, you can either take a pair of pliers and pinch them tighter like so, or if you want to, you could actually use your vise. But I think it's easier if you do it by, by just using the hand tools. And you can see now I have a good free movement. So you just repeat these steps over and over again until you have a fully joined sailor's chain. Now in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to use wire wrap techniques to create a hook and eye closure like this one. I hope you liked this video. If you do, be sure to give it a thumbs up and click the button in the lower right hand corner of your screen so that you'll become a subscriber to our channel. We regularly post on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and we have paid courses on udemy.com. If you like the tools that I have in the video, check the description below the video to find links so that you can buy comparable tools. Thanks for watching.